14 away from 10 o'clock, and it's the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. Good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. AccuWeather says today, mostly cloudy, a chance of showers on the way to 74 degrees. Tammy Curry is in the studio with us this morning. She's got another event coming up, and it's going to help out some local agency. We're going to find out about it. Our conversation presented by Marcus and Mac, voted best law firm and best personal injury lawyer three years in a row in the best of Indiana County contest. Visit them online at marcusandmac.com. Tammy, good morning. Good morning, Todd. Thanks good. for having me back good again. To have <laughs> good to have you. You, uh, you have an event October 12th, huh? Yes, we do. Uh Um, It's the first annual Oktoberfest, and it's a rib, wing, and chili cook-off. And it's going to be held at the S&T Arena in the upper lot. Mm -hmm. And the time is from 1 to 5. And the tickets are $15 a person. We're trying to keep those low Mm -hmm. this year. But the uh, portion of the proceeds is going to go towards the White Township Recreation Improvement Fund. Oh, they're doing okay. so much out there. It's uh-huh. just really looking great. It's really a pretty looking. amazing uh, job that they're doing out there. Yeah. My goodness, the amphitheater yeah. project, uh, the parking lot paving, and yeah. and uh, they've they've really, I mean, the tennis courts are beautiful, aren't they? Uh, yeah. So they all of those things job. going on. So what happens at this event? Well, at this event, the public can come and and sample from those who are participating with their ribs, wing, or chili, mm-hmm. and then they'll get to vote for their favorite. We have two categories. Um, One's going to be the professionals, like the food trucks and the restaurants and things like that. And then we'll have, like, the backyard barbecuers, and we call them the kings and queens of the kitchen with the the chili Uh and everything. So, um, And we have some entertainment there. Duke House Bombers is going to be there from 2. Well, actually, it's 2 to 4, I believe. But, um, yeah, so and we'll have some other vendors set up that they can purchase, like, food items from – Food-related items, I mm-hmm. should say, not food. Food. We do have Porsches, who's going to be there with her bobas and James Lee Coffee Company with their coffee. But we'll have like Michael Manna's spices and I think tastefully simple. I have a few of them. Honey Badger Bakery is going to be there with her baked goods. So all kinds so. of good eating happening yeah. on that day. Yeah, so, and, just, and and you're still looking for folks to compete. We are. We okay. are. We're still looking for folks to compete. They can contact me by calling me. Or on our Facebook page, um, we do have one. It's called the, um, the First Annual Oktoberfest Rib Wing and Chili Cook-Off on mm-hmm. Facebook. They can go there. Or they can call me, and if they want tickets, anybody wants tickets, they can also give me a call. I'm going to try to be set up a couple locations. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> it's busy. Today I will be at the summit. Today and tomorrow I'm at Summit Church. Uh-huh. Um, they're having their She Is conference. So I will be out there. I have my booth for my charcuterie. So I'm selling tickets there as mm-hmm. well. So from 12 to 7 today and, geez, I don't know what time tomorrow. I can't remember. <laughs> it's just, it's been a coming kind of a blurry day. And also, we've started a concession for the over 40 baseball league. Uh-huh. And okay. um, so I'll be selling them there on Sunday from 12 to 6. Mm-hmm. So they've got, uh, you've got ribs and wings in this. Are they, are they together, the ribs and wings, or are they separate, separate competitions? Everything is separate. All, everything so will be judged ribs, separately. Ribs, wings. And chili. chili. Uh, so whatever you're good at, uh, you can you can enter that competition. Uh, and, and you got the pros and you got the amateurs. Right, yeah. right. We thought we'd do it then. And it will all be judged separately. Mm-hmm. So the pros get their own judging. The amateurs get their own judging. We have two chefs so far that are judging, John Drusel and hmm, I can't remember her husband's name, but she's Honey Badger Bakery's <laughs> okay. husband. And he's um, he's a chef. I can't remember where he is, mm-hmm. either, but... At any rate, and we also have a really nice thing that we're raffling off. Um, Lowe's was kind enough to donate us a really nice Charbroil 5 uh, burner gas grill. Oh, nice. So, yeah, that's going to be a prize that we're going to raffle off, and the proceeds will go from to the recreation fund and probably a couple other baskets that yeah. we're doing. And we're still looking for sponsors, too. Okay. Really low, 100 or $200 sponsor. We're not... Going for the thousand dollar sponsors, uh-huh. just enough to help with the proceeds and and the overhead for it. So sure, sure, okay. So the event itself is on October the twelfth. It's at the S and T Bank Arena, uh, and and throw those times out at me again, please. From one to five. From one until yeah, five. and they have to have a ticket to enter. We're supposed to, I believe, have a winery there. So to enter, you're going to have to have your ticket, and we will give you a wristband. 
Okay. Because we were in a couple other things where people just walked in and they didn't have the paperwork or anything and they just sampled and mm-hmm. it kind of got out of control. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we, we want to make sure that A, they're 21 if they're going to be having any wine or, or whatever mm-hmm. like that, but B, that they actually have paid for their ticket and they're going to come in and we will have tickets available at the gate. Yeah. I mean, this is the first time you've tried this particular event. Uh, yeah. And anytime those things, uh, have a first and inaugural edition. Yeah. Uh, there usually are some things you have to iron out, uh, right. but and, and that's one of them. You have to make sure yeah. that everybody is is uh, is well proper. I, yes. I guess. Yeah. So yeah. so that'll be all happening at the S and T Bank Arena. <coughs> now, when you talk about uh, the White Township Recreation Improvement Fund, um, they have done so much there. Uh, just in this year alone, yeah. we've talked with Chris Anderson about that, uh, and yeah. and they're very very happy about it. Oh, yes. uh, and uh, you know, it's inside the building, and it's outside the building, right? Uh, right. And, and so, uh, you know, they've they've done so much, and they've got so many people that use that facility. All you really have to do is go out there on a weekend, and you see, you know, right. especially right now. Yeah, they've uh, they, just paved the the lot, the upper lot. Is that's so much nicer yeah. too, and, and put a. A lane where you can turn down instead of everybody's just kind of getting congested there. They have the lane. And like you said, the tennis courts are beautiful. Mm-hmm. The uh, landscaping, I have to say, those guys are so busy all the time, planting yeah. and, and pruning and picking out weeds and everything. And it just it's just a really beautiful, beautiful place to, for people to gather in Indiana. And that's why I, I try to focus my events out there, whether it be indoor, like our Country Fair Christmas is also coming up on December 7th. So I have that to finish ironing that yeah. one out too yeah. but it's just a, it's a great place and ryan and his staff are just they're really wonderful to work with yeah and yeah, they're really helpful and it takes a lot to string trim a place that big too yeah. uh, with all of those different things around it uh, right and just the field maintenance of uh, you know the the over 40 league is going strong right now and, it is uh, and those guys get out there and they really have a great time at it they do all three fields are going yep they had a double header last weekend so we were busy with our little concession we had um Wave Rider Sweet Shop came up with Penn State ice cream and Honey Badger was there and I had my stuff and people were eating and, and really thankful that we're doing something there as far as concession goes. So yeah. I'm, we're hoping to grow that, I hope, in the spring. But um, And they're, they're doing the pond out there and mm-hmm. I'm told they're going to stock it. So, oh, yeah? Yeah. Right. So, so and big then the amphitheater, that's going to be a, another big thing big attraction yeah i think that's there. that's one of the most interesting uh and exciting aspects of everything that they're doing out there is the amphitheater is going to be absolutely a, a game changer because right uh, you know folks will come there and uh, they'll enjoy uh events there and and that'll be an all summer all, well, not only all summer but summer and fall and even the spring mm-hmm. uh when people will go over be able to go to concerts and uh, maybe put on some summer theater plays, and, and yeah, it's going to be really fun. I think it's going to be a great addition to White Township. I'm really excited about it. Um, they're also discussing putting in an Earth stage down on the bottom where I usually have my festivals and things because mm-hmm. either we have a stage that we've rented or they're on the ground uh-huh. under a tent. So there's talk of an Earth stage going in, which is really nothing, just putting some fill in there and you know doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just, it's kind of neat, though. I'm excited. I hope that we do get to get that done and put it in, lighting. firm it up, and and there you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so again, October the 12th, it's happening at the S and T Bank Arena, um, and this is an all outdoor event. Yes, it'll be in the upper lot. If you're facing the building, it'll be to the right okay. of the building, and the new paved lot is going to be really nice to uh-huh. put food trucks and and tents in there. So, and it'll be nice for the people. They don't have to walk in gravel. There you go. Anymore, so. Get your tickets ahead of time. You said your Facebook page is a good place to go? Yes. First annual Oktoberfest rib, wing, and chili cook-off. Or they can call me at 724-599-7497. She is Tammy Curry. And there's the event. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. 9.56, it's four minutes away from the top of the hour. Fox News comes your way then. We follow that with a brief look at news with Josh from the WCCS Newsroom, and then it is the Brian Kilmeade Show. Of course, high school football tonight here on WCCS. It's Homer Center against Connemouth Valley. Both teams looking for win number one, but kicking off the second half of the season. Both of them looking to put some things together here and maybe make a run at the District 6 playoffs. You'll see it on Renda Digital TV in addition to be able to
to listen to it here on WCCS. So high school football, remember tomorrow on WDAD 8 to 10, it's the Luther Ford Coaches Corner Program. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. From the moment you walk into a Sansos Italian deli is like taking a trip back to the old country in Italy. Shelves stocked with authentic Italian cuisine, pasta, pasta sauces, and a pasta salad. Boar's head meats, all kinds of cheeses, and Italian cooking oils. Fresh bread daily with a hot deli items. Right next door is a Sansos Pizzeria with the finest pizzas, salads, and hoagies in the area. Sansos Italian deli and pizzeria, two locations, Homer City and Route 22 Blairsville. Like taking a trip mwah, back to the old country in Italy. This this is Mark Burdick, Vice President of Renda Media, and our third annual Best of Indiana County contest was record-breaking with 335,000 votes cast, highlighting almost 1,100 businesses in our region. I'm excited to announce that the third annual Best of Indiana County magazine has been released, and we salute all of our winners. Hi, this is Julie with Indiana Floral on Warren Road. I would like to thank my customers, community, and friends for placing us gold in the best of Indiana County three years in a row. I would especially like to thank my staff for all their hard work throughout the year. We are honored to receive this award. This is Alyssa McNulty, and on behalf of all of us here at Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated, we'd like to thank the community for voting us the best in Indiana County. Discover more local winners in our Best of Indiana County magazine, which is now available. September is the start of fall, and it's also a perfect occasion to think about preventing falls in the home. According to the National Council on Aging, falls are the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries among older adults. At Diamond Medical Supply, we carry an array of items to keep you safe and upright, from mobility aids like canes and rollators, to lift chairs, to bathroom safety aids like grab bars and shower benches. Visit our Oakland Avenue showroom to see it all. Lower your fall risk with the help of Indiana County's best medical supply store, Diamond Medical Supply, where we care about care. It's Ram Power Days going on right now at Luther Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Northern Cambria. Check out the new 2024 Dodge Hornet all-wheel drive starting as low as 37865 with interest rates at 2.9% for 84 months and no payment up to 90 days. Now that's powerful. With $7,500 down plus tax and tax, must qualify for all rebates and financing through Chrysler Capital. Or how about this lightning deal? The 2024 Ram 1500 4x4 Bighorn as low as 46572 must qualify for all rebates with Chrysler Capital. Plus, ask about lightning deals on all in stock 2,500 and 3,500 Rams. Plus, 2023 Chrysler 300 all-wheel drives as low as 41,488. It's the last call on Challengers and Chargers, so save huge on these models as well. And if credit's a problem, call their lucky number at 814-948-7777. And you can also check out the rest of their inventory on the web at LutherCDJR.com. Luther Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Northern Cambria, where people still make the difference. 101.1 FM and AM 1160 WCCS, Homer City, Chambersville. WCCS. Forecasters warn of catastrophic flooding. I'm Jack Callahan, Fox News. From the rain being dumped on the southwest by the remnants of Hurricane Helene. Catastrophic flooding in and around the Atlanta area, northeast of Atlanta, up towards the Carolinas. And some of the language that the National Weather Service is using, especially in the southern Appalachians, is historic. Never happened before. Fox senior meteorologist Janice Dean, since downgraded to a tropical storm, Helene is inundating western North Carolina. Now she slammed into Florida's coast as a cat. Category 4 hurricane last night. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis. Search and rescue operations uh, were conducted to help people that were in distress and transport them to safety. These missions continue, uh, but we've had thousands of missions successfully completed in the overnight hours. At least six deaths are now blamed on the storm. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu is addressing the UN General Assembly at this hour. Israel seeks peace. Israel yearns for peace. Israel has made peace and will make peace again. This even as his country is under attack from Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. So Israel's aero missile defense system shot the incoming missile down just after midnight. There are no major injuries reported from this. Now Israeli airstrikes continue this morning. 
Fox's Nate Foy in Tel Aviv. Vice President Harris visits the southern border today. Heading to southern Arizona, marking her first visit to the border since running for president. And she's taking on some issues that have been a particular weak spot for her campaign, namely immigration and border security. Fox's Jeff Paul, former President Trump, in a news conference yesterday asking... Why didn't she fix it almost four years ago? She's got no plans. Got no talent, got no ability to do it. America is listening to Fox News. NYPD officer Jonathan Diller's tragic story made national headlines this year. Now, Jonathan was shot and killed by a career criminal during a traffic stop. Jonathan, who is just 31 years old, leaves behind his wife Stephanie and one-year-old son Ryan. Now, nothing will ever replace the loss of a husband and a father, but the Tunnel to Towers Foundation was able to pay off the mortgage on the Diller family's home. Please commit to 11 bucks a month. Go to their website, the letter T, the number two, the letter T.org for the Tunnel to Towers Foundation. Hey, I'm going to let you in on a wireless hack that can cut your cell phone bill in half. Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, they want you to think that unlimited data is fantastic. Well, the fact is, it's not. Pure Talk, my cell phone company, only charges you for data that you need. For just 25 bucks a month, you get unlimited talk, unlimited text, 5 gigs of data, plus mobile hotspot. Just dial pound 250, say the keyword save now, and do it now. You'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Save money, same service with Pure Talk. I'm Josh Whittison reporting. The Indiana County Republican Party has released details on how they plan to fill the vacancy left by the resignation of Commissioner Robin Gorman. A sentencing hearing is scheduled today for a man charged with rear-ending a state police cruiser and becoming aggressive with troopers. A brush fire was reported yesterday in the northeastern part of the county. On top of that, there were other calls for automatic fire alarm activations, smoke investigations, and a vehicle fire. The newly formed State Board of Higher Education met for the first time yesterday. An Indiana woman is charged with public drunkenness after she was found lying on the roadway Wednesday night. As construction continues on the new IRMC Behavioral Health Building, a career fair will be held today to staff that facility. And the River Valley Steam Academy in Salzburg is getting ready for two major events next week. In sports, it's the second half of the high school football season. Week 6 matchups include on WCCS and Renda Digital TV, Homer Center taking on Connemaw Valley. Airtime on WCCS and Renda Digital TV is 6.15 tonight. AccuWeather forecast, mostly cloudy, a chance of showers. Today's high 74. Cloudy skies tonight with a stray shower, a low of 66. Coming up next on WCCS is the Brian Kilmeade Show, portions of which are pre-recorded. From the WCCS Newsroom, I'm Josh Whittison. Bob Casey supported sanctuary city policies that let criminal illegal immigrants onto our streets instead of deporting them. Casey voted over and over again to fund sanctuary cities, making our neighborhoods less safe. After an illegal alien was arrested for domestic assault in Philadelphia, instead of deporting him, they let him go. Thanks to sanctuary city policies Bob Casey supported. That same criminal, released under the radical policy Casey voted for, went on to repeatedly rape a five-year-old girl. It could have been prevented. It should have been prevented. But Bob Casey failed us. The U.S. attorney said this young girl was raped because of Philadelphia's sanctuary city policy. Bob Casey voted over and over for this madness, putting our families, our children, at risk. We've had enough of Bob Casey. Senate Leadership Fund paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidates committee. SenateLeadershipFund.org. It's News Talk AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM, and it's time to fall into cash and win $1,000 with our $1,000 Workday Contest. Here's this hour's keyword brought to you by Mr. J's in the Johnstown Galleria. Smile. S-M-I-L-E. Smile. Text that keyword now to 508-777-1000. That's 508-777-1000 for a shot to win $1,000 in this nationwide contest. Good luck from WCCS. Sean Hannity here, and you are listening to the voice of Indiana County, WCCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. From the Fox News Radio Studios in Midtown Manhattan, it's the fastest-growing radio talk show. 
Brian Kilmeade. Hi, I'm Brian Kilmeade here. So glad you're with me all week long. It's been an impactful week. In New York, we feel like the U.N. has overwhelmed everything. If you're in the southeast, you feel the hurricane has overwhelmed everything. Though you understand it, one thing you cannot miss is an election that almost everyone feels like they're engaged in. In a matter of moments, we'll be with Senator Shelley Moore Capito. Uh, she's going to weigh in on everything going on and all the impact, all things taking place today. For example, President Trump is meeting with President Zelensky in about 45 minutes. So let's get to the big three. Now with the stories you need to know, it's Brian's Big Three. Number three. They say that there was a quid pro quo where the mayor intervened to speed along a fire inspection approval process for a Turkish consulate. But the mayor can say, look, that's what mayors do. You know, this is a city with a lot of diplomats and we want to avoid diplomatic problems, including the arrival of the president of that country. So he has defenses. Yep, Mayor Eric Adams indicted. It'll be arranged in hours and charged today. While a 57-page indictment has allegations that are disturbing, I just got to wonder if politics is playing a role in this. For example, how he was critical of President Biden. And suddenly, it all fell apart. Number two. An operator from Baller ESU had exited the red barn behind the stage. When shots rang out, he was able to quickly identify where the shots were coming from. And he fired one round at the shooter which caused the shooter to recoil and briefly fall out of sight. No other rounds were fired by the shooter after he was engaged by the Butler ESU operator. So who killed him? Assassination investigations are revealing outrageous errors and the FBI stonewalling while the Iran threat remains. We look at the revelations that have emerged after this week's hearings. Number one. We are going to the border. We've been to the border. This whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. Yeah, that's... I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. Well, she went to the border once in 2021, and she's going back just three years later. Harris, first visit to the border in three years, as I mentioned. We'll try to convince America she actually cares about the issue as Trump meets uh, with uh, going to, goes to Michigan today. Plus, we're going to look at the new Fox polls in Arizona and Georgia. Let's bring in Senator Shelley Moore Capita. <laughs> Uh, Capito of West Virginia. Senator, I know that you are friendly with Joe Manchin, but it looks like you're going to get a Republican partner uh, in November in Jim Justice. Well, no doubt. Uh, Jim Justice, our governor, who's a great governor, <clears throat> will be coming to uh, Capitol Hill, and that will be one race in the barn for the Republicans. And I think uh, he will win overwhelmingly, yes. And so I'm very pleased about that. I endorsed him early, came for his announcement, and pleased that he's moving forward to towards a victory. What, what is your best next uh, race that mm -hmm. you feel more uh, as confident, almost as confident on? Yeah, you know, I think Montana is the race that uh, appears as though it's it's moving in the right, not moving in the right direction, but the the numbers are getting uh, the spreads getting more for Tim Sheehy to defeat uh, John Tester. Ohio is looking good with Bernie Marino uh, to defeat Sherrod Brown. Pennsylvania is another one with David McCormick uh, neck and neck with uh, Casey. I think Michigan has is an open seat, which is always a great opportunity. Has has a real possibility there, Mike. Rogers is a fantastic uh, guy, served in Congress with him. He would be a wonderful senator, a great Republican. Maryland is up for grabs, which is hard to believe. And Arizona, Nevada, there's lots going on. But I, I put the top three, probably Ohio, uh, West Virginia, and uh, Montana. So let's talk about where uh, Vice President Harris is going. You know, she has ignored the border. She didn't want to go to the border. She basically got badgered into it. To show how long it's been, the video that we see, she's wearing a mask outdoors. So that's, it was mid-pandemic where she went to the border. Right. And over 8 million have gotten through, let alone the gotaways. Here is, uh, here is Mitch Landrew talking about how, really how strong she is on the border. He's one of, uh, of the chief surrogates for the vice president, Cut 3. On every day that she has 